Archery's appeal, how one of the world's oldest sports is trying to revamp its image. Rising star, meet China's top golfer who's hoping to have a brand new tour to play on. How amputee football has helped unite former warring factions. And Lazy River, it certainly isn't. We go rowing in the Zambezi regatta. Welcome to Sports World, Al Jazeera's regular look at sport around the globe. I'm Carthy Nyan Seagram, and this week we're featuring some of your favourite pieces. This summer, the elite of world sport will be gathered in Beijing for the Olympics. For smaller sports, it'll be an opportunity to promote their cause in an attempt to gain more exposure, participants and funding. One of those sports is archery, which has gone through something of a revamp in an attempt to attract more fans, starting at the Archery World Cup. Sports World's Joanna Gajroska was there. Gone are the days of green tights and shooting apples off heads. The sport of archery is being dragged into the future. This is the Archery World Cup. It's only the second time it's been held, but organisers from the Sports International Federation hope it can breathe new life into an ancient art. Well, basically, archery is a very traditional sport, and uh, we've had archery for as many years as you know men have existed. And uh, that's one reason why we want to preserve our sport. In 2007, the finals came here to Dubai in the Middle East, a place building a reputation for itself as a sporting hub, and archery wasn't about to miss out. After a series of four qualifying events held in Korea, Italy, Turkey and the UK, the field has been whittled down to the world's 12 best archers across four categories. We have two kinds of bows, the recurve bow and the compound bow. Uh, for those who have seen on television and, and films uh, Rambo, you will see that the bows of the compound archers shoot here. It's the same as Rambo, you know, shoots when, when you're shooting a compound bow, you can have a kind of a release or a release aid. It's like a trigger that the archers can use, and so this is what holds the string, and that sort of like makes it easy for the archers to shoot their arrows. The one we use at the Olympic Games is the recurve bow, and the limbs of the bow are, re are curved. That's why we call it recurve. Uh, uh, with a recurve bow, you only use your fingers to pull the string. Regardless of equipment, the archers have just 12 arrows each to defeat their opponents. And much like cricket has introduced the 2020 format to attract a wider audience, Archery's World Cup has brought some fundamental changes to the sport. The archers have just 20 seconds to release their arrows, as opposed to the usual 30. Add to that a first prize of $20,000 and set the whole thing in a glamorous setting and you've got the makings of a sport made for an increasingly discerning audience. Well, the professionals make it look easy, but this is actually what they're trying to hit, the 10-point ring. It's just over 12 centimetres in diameter, a little bit bigger than the palm of my hand. It looks quite big to you and me, but actually they're standing 70 metres away, so it's not quite simple. And as I found out, it's not that easy even drawing the bow. It's really hard. <laughs> One of those competing in the men's recurve category is Alan Wills, a man hoping to lead the Great Britain team to glory at the Beijing Olympics. Um, I first started archery about 1994, 95. Um, I really started, I just like shooting things really. That's, and it's a bit of a buzz that you get from using a bow and arrow. I, and it's addictive when you're actually doing it. And it's a sport that anyone can do. Fat, skinny, tall, short, anything. It doesn't matter where you come from, what you do. Anyone can do archery. And That's something Petra Eriksson can agree with. A veteran of the tour, she goes into this World Cup a little larger than usual as she's expecting her first baby. Um, and I know that you're pregnant. How does that affect your, your, uh, your archery? A little bit. <laughs> Since I'm getting heavier, it's a bit heavier to move around in the heat, but otherwise than that, it's, it's fine. Yeah. More than fine, in fact, with the Swede clinching the women's compound title. She is the gold medalist, she is the world champion. The mum-to-be was a little emotional as she picked up the $20,000 prize. 
Archery has for years been dominated by the Chinese, Koreans and Russians. But new to the scene is India, and one woman in particular is making waves. This is very good sports for me and I like this very much this sport, but in our India is not a very popular sports in India. So they are improving archery last two, three years. So I think after 10 years, India also very good result in Olympics. It took far less time than that, as Dola Banerjee clinched the recurve title with the final arrows of the match, beating her Korean opponent. But can a faster form of the sport set to a pop soundtrack really change the way archery is perceived? One of those competing is skeptical. It is archery. Uh, it's not never going to be as uh, interesting as uh, baseball, football, or anything like that. But uh, I think that they're making great strides towards getting it more uh, entertaining for younger audiences. So I think they just need to keep doing what they're doing. And you're a student, so what would you spend your twenty thousand dollars on if you won today? <laughs> Uh, I should say uh, my education, but I think it's going to go for more recreation and uh, going out to dinner with my friends. <laughs> Students say they never change. In the end, Guillantine had to settle for second place. No doubt the $10,000 prize will still be used just as wisely. Future ahead of him. It wasn't quite the sellout crowd organizers had hoped for, but those who did turn out seemed genuinely interested and enthusiastic to see more. With the World Cup expected to have been watched live by millions around the world on television, both the competitors and the organisers are hoping they've done enough to target a new generation of archers. Joanna Gajroska, Al Jazeera, Dubai. The powers that be in golf are hoping they've a rising star on their hands from a country that's constantly in the spotlight. Golf is a relatively new sport in China, but now they have someone who's breaking new ground himself. Liang Wenchong is going where no other Chinese player has been before, and he could well have a brand new tour to play on. Wayne Hay caught up with him in Thailand. Being the number one at anything takes a certain amount of talent. But you're looking at the number one golfer from China. Impressive when you consider he's from a country with a population of more than 1.3 billion. And it's a population that's becoming increasingly keen on chasing little white balls around. And they're now being fed a diet of top-level golf like never before. When the China tour first started, the total prize money was only about $50,000. Now we have $5 million tournaments in China. And there are many more top tournaments coming to China, European tour and Asian tour. When it comes to homegrown talent, Liang Wen Chong is leading the way. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you very much. the order of merit. Thank you very much. Worked hard all year. Thank you. He became the first player from China to win the Asian Tour's Order of Merit, finishing last season with more than half a million dollars in the bank. He only had one victory on tour, but his trademark was consistency, finishing in the top ten in eight other tournaments. His reward, another place in the history books. He'll become the first Chinese player to tee off in the Open Championship at Royal Birkdale in July. And the world number 89 also now has a full-time place on the European tour. Uh, there are many tournaments in many countries in Europe that I've never been to, so it's going to be a learning experience. I will need to learn the tour and the culture and get comfortable with it. Also this year, I'd like to have more opportunities to play in America on the US PGA Tour. If I get exemptions or invites, I will take them. So I'll take it as an opportunity to learn both tours and see where I can fit in better or feel more comfortable. While many players make their mark at a much younger age than 29, Liang's progression has been steady, considering he didn't pick up a golf club until he was 16. He went on to win three straight China amateur titles before finding his feet on the Asian tour. You wouldn't know it judging by the size of the galleries at this tournament, but Asian golf is on the rise. The Asian tour itself is becoming bigger and better all the time, and prize money has certainly increased over the years. And some of its biggest stars are going on to feature more prominently on the high-profile US and European tours. But the landscape could be about to change. There's a new tour being mooted. 
The proposed One Asia Tour will be an amalgamation of sorts between the Australasia, Japan and Asia tours. We're just in a very early stage. We're just uh, starting to talk together about if uh, amalgamation, especially from our point of the Asian tour, will enhance the, the tournaments in terms of uh, a TV coverage, uh, uh, you know, uh, public and interest, sponsorship interest, and, and, and whether the players will, will also embrace it. So we're in early stages, but it's something that we're looking at it very seriously. The aim of the new tour would be to one day rival those in the United States and Europe. That's the main thing, and that's why we're talking about this amalgamation of the three tours where, <coughs> where this uh, tour creates a platform for the corporate sponsors and also enhances the playing opportunities of the players to play with more prize money. So, yeah, in, in a way, we want to make this region uh, a big player in, in, in world golf. Which would in turn help keep some of the best players, like Liang, in Asia. His emergence is perfect timing for the Asian tour as the world turns its attention to the region and in particular China. China is pretty new to the game but they develop so fast especially with golf courses and, and, and all that and you know the, the bigger prize money events are all there so the market's there and you know the, the players are there you know I mean <laughs> Zhang Yangwei was one of the role models and now with Liang Wang Chong you know winning, <coughs> winning this uh, order of merit I think it, it, it makes uh, a lot of the young players uh, well, wanting to do the same thing and and with proper coaching and training I think golf's going to really develop fast in, in China. Liang certainly doing his part. He's passionate about seeing the game grow in his homeland. So much so that he donates a percentage of his prize money to the development of golf there. During my career, I've had a lot of people helping me along the way. So I like to give back. I like to help the next generation to get involved in this game. It's too early to say whether Liang Wen Chong is an international star of the future. He still has to prove himself on the really big stage, which is the US PGA Tour. Perhaps what he is, though, is a sign of things to come from Chinese golf. I'll take it a step at a time. The most important thing is I love this sport. And it's all about what I can do to devote to this sport and make it better and continue to improve myself. I can't determine the result, but all I can do is improve. Wayne Hay, Al Jazeera, Bangkok. Don't forget to have a look at our website, aljazeera.net slash English, where you can get all the latest sports news and find out more about the show. Stay with Sports World because coming up, hippo dodging, just some of the obstacles the world's best rowers had to get round on the Zambezi River.